Uh, let's head into the papers and take a look at stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. And joining me on Skype is Chris Kendewandu, CK, uh, CEO of CKN News. Chris, good morning. It's good to have you join me now. Thank you very much, Mike. Great. Thank God it's Friday. Yeah, thank God it's Friday. I can see the mood around you already. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's begin with uh, News Direct this morning. News Direct is the first paper we're looking at. NDDC, uh, Senate orders MD to refund 4.923 billion naira illegal payment. Okay, that's what uh, News Direct is saying. And uh, House of Reps said to drag Akwabio to court. I was misquoted. Akwabio is replying there. And no 2.3 billion naira NDDC bridge at uh, Elebele Bielsa, that's the media aide is saying this, okay? Uh, Senate orders MD to refund uh, 4.9 illegal, a billionaire illegal payment. Uh, I'm sure that my guests will be interested in talking about this because uh, the, uh, all that controversy is still in the air, that debate and discussion. Moving now to Daily Trust. Daily Trust says reps allege 100 billionaire fraud in Northeast Development Commission. We didn't get up to 100 billion naira. NEDC MD is saying that. That's the MDC, the MD of uh, the North Eastern Development Commission. Now, we're not aware of allegation. The ministry is saying this. And Senate asks NDDC to refund 4.9 billion naira. Uh, we can't join issues with legislators, okay? Uh, still issues, allegations, and allegations, and more allegations here and there on money is being spent on different things. From Daily Trust, let's go to Blueprint newspaper. Uh, Blueprint says, shock tribute as a female, a first female helicopter combat pilot, uh, Tululokwe, uh, laid to rest. Uh, we're still in grief, as the chief of air staff, Abubakar, is saying this, and uh, her exemplary skills are too difficult to emulate. This family is saying this, and late pilot put service before self. Kogi State Governor is saying that, and Senate wants her immortalized. Okay, it's really shocking and troubling to everyone across uh, the country who heard the death of uh, Tululokwe Arotile. Okay, may her soul certainly rest in peace. From the Blueprint newspaper, let's go to the Daily Times. Daily Times said domestic airlines on the brink of collapse. Domestic airlines on the brink of collapse. You recall that they were asking for a bailout or assistance from the government due to the impact of COVID-19. And if they're to survive, the government has to assist them one way or the other. Okay. Yeah, let, let, CKN, uh, Chris, let me come to you now on the story on the front page of uh, News Direct that says uh, it's, it's a follow-up from the NDDC. Senate orders uh, MD to refund 4.9 billion naira illegal payments. Uh, I, you see this headline. I wonder what you make, especially when you heard of billions upon billions upon billions that were, you know, expended or alleged to have been expended one way or the other. You saw all the drama that went down at the House of Representatives, uh, uh, public hearing or investigative hearing rather. And apart from that too, all the, uh, 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 you know, defense back and forth and allegations here and there. I wonder what you make of this. Uh, Mike, it's rather unfortunate uh, what is playing out uh, at the end of this scene. Um, it has been drama upon drama uh with um, allegations and counter allegations and um, those um involved um, have been trying to tell their story um some drama in dramatic manner um, fainting slapping themselves um accusing themselves of marrying and um, thousands of wives um, husbands and rest of them but that is not the issue for us for us nigerians we are not interested in the personal uh, personalizing those issues what I just want to know is what happened to the funds uh, that was uh, allocated for the development of the Niger Delta area, which has uh, found itself into the pockets of certain Nigerians, uh, to the detriment of um, um, the people of the Niger Delta and some part of the Southeast who, who are members of the NDDC. Um, that, to me, is the cross of the issue. Now, um, on the Senate resolution, 
for me, I think that would be a bit premature because um, the, there's a presidential uh, uh, investigative uh, panel, or uh, panel that has been set up to look at um, those issues. So I think we should be able to wait for the for that report. The president has already said that um, he wants an accelerated um, investigation into those issues. So um, once we get that report, we can then match it with that of the Senate and House of Representatives. Then we can now move forward. But in the interim, personally, I think that the federal government should ask the interim uh, management uh, team, as it were, to step aside um, currently um, until all these investigations are carried out and um, those uh, found capable uh, should be prosecuted. I don't see why they should be on that seat um, more than two minutes or three minutes further uh, than they are presently. Um, he who must come to everything must come with clean hands. Mm. And then since they have been investigated, I think that the best thing for them is to just step aside now uh, so that they don't tamper with the uh, investigation. All right. Now, uh, th th these are public funds you know, from taxpayers' money, one way or the other. Whether it is monies from the oil or monies from, you know, crude oil or whatever it is, it is... It is public money. That's what the thing is. But the point there is, at this point, uh, we expect, or Nigerians expect, that the ICPC or the EFCC should be moving in to, uh, you know, follow up on some of the allegations that were made. Uh, is that what you're expecting to? Uh, that would be a multifaceted uh, dimension or investigation. Don't forget that um, EFCC on its own is having its own challenges now. The ESCC is standing on one, feet, uh, one foot uh, with the variety of allegations never against the former acting or suspended acting chairman of the EFCC. So EFCC in this uh, um, is not in a stable state of mind. Yeah, but, 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 Chris, but Chris, the point there is the, the, the issues around the, the, chair, the acting chairman of the EFCC is, is just personality. The EFCC as an organization is an institution by itself, and it should be functioning. It shouldn't be on a standstill because the, chair, the acting chairman has uh, uh, or is facing a panel. Yes, I agree with you, Mike. But you know the problem. Some of the, the problem in Nigeria, just as uh, some of us have been saying, most of them are not. We don't beat institutions. We beat uh, personalities. So you come to see in personalities um, um, where uh, in their position very, very overbearing. And um, once anything happens to them, we, then it affects the organization. So once we start building institutions instead of personalities, then we, we won't be finding ourselves in the situation we find ourselves now. Since Magu went on um, on uh, suspension, have you ever heard anything from the EFCC? None. So that is the problem we're having, and those are the challenges. But to me, I think um, the, the, there's a presidential forestic uh, uh, panel that has been set up. The National Assembly, um, these are the oversight functions, the House of Reps, and the uh, Senate are already doing something along that line. Then I think that we should just wait on them to be able to see. Then, if they're done submit their report and some people have one month, then the EFCC and the ICPC could not come in to tidy up the loose ends, get those invest um, those um, found culpable, arrested, and prosecuted. But, Mike, if I, let me say this as quickly as possible. Let, I, I will say, if you ask me, I mean, very, 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 I'm pestimistic uh, with these investigations. We have why, so many why is that? Past. Why is that? Yes, because we have had so many in the past, uh, Mike, um, even some more, even worse than what we have presently. At the end of it all, the reports of those panels are just swept under the carpet and we move on as if nothing happened. If anything happens tomorrow, that we just follow this investigation. That, has, that will be it. And this is where I think the president should come in for the, uh, let him step, uh, put his feet down and make sure that those found people uh, in these circumstances that are prosecuted and um, used as scapegoats. Um, if you see what is happening in the Niger Delta, at the level of development in this uh, area, you will shed tears. This is, a, a, this is the uh, hand that lets the good egg, and for goodness sake, and they are in the whole place in total mess. And the money made for the, those developments has just been siphoned. That is what is the, the, the federal government went ahead to set up the Niger, uh, Ministry of Niger Delta. There's also the 30% derivation um, that comes to that area. But go to those areas, there's nothing to show for it. Mike, it's just on run, unfortunately. All right. Now, at this point, hearing about all of these, certainly a lot of Nigerians are just generally 
disappointed uh, in, in, in what is going on. As much as there hasn't been any conclusion where it is affirmed that so, so amount of money was actually spent and all of that, but the, the, the Senate uh, panelist is telling the, the NDDC, the MD, to refund about 4.9 billion naira. That's a lot of money. Now, when it comes to these things being a deterrent to other people, if he is just told to refund that money and nothing is going to happen after that time, how much of a deterrence would that be to others who intend to do it? Or in fact, one of the headlines this morning is talking about uh, 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 there are also an alleged 100 billion naira to the Northeast Development uh, uh, Commission, although they have said they didn't receive up to that. But when these things begin to come out, it tells you there's, there's something on the lining somewhere. Yes, it is. Uh, that is it's very sad. Um, if you remember when they, um, during the investigation, the part of the uh, question and answer, during the question and answer session, the MD, um, to everybody's shock, said that um, they, they, they shared about 1.3 billion naira among themselves um, as palliatives on COVID 19. What kind of palliative is that? These are money that's supposed to go to the downtrodden road day within this region. And the chief executives and the directors and the, well, become millionaires and the millionaires uh, are sharing this. Um, but I mean, another aspect of it is that very annoying for me is the fact that these are people from the Niger Delta. These mm. guys are from Niger Delta. That, if you understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. these people from the, they are not from the other parts of the country. All these so called directors, um, active MDs, uh, ministers, or whatever you call them. All of them are from Niger Delta, which makes it even much, 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 much annoying. So I think, and I believe, and I hope that this investigation uh, will be used to be able to prosecute some of these people who have taken it upon themselves to just continue to siphon money uh, meant for public use and um, it, it, uh, the way they like. And Mike, before we run off, the, don't forget, this is also an interim management committee that was set up to investigate the former um, board. Now they have their hands in the cookies, uh, the, the cookie jars, and uh, they are just stealing like, um, no, just, although alleged, we should continue using that word alleged until it has been established, but uh, it's rather unfortunate that within just a few months, what these people have done, it is rather unfortunate and I think we should be able to. So, and it's certainly happening in other agencies uh, within the Niger Delta. You see what's happening in the amnesty, um, uh, the amnesty, um, the, the amnesty uh, program. Program. What has happened? All the chief executives have been um, dismissed or sacked and removed because of um, alleged fraud, and none of them have been brought to book it today. If one of them is abroad, uh, despite what they have done now with billions and billions that is stolen, uh, might this should be worrisome to us. Mm. But but in in your perspective or in your opinion, what do you think can be done? Because the point there is that. Government has uh, laid down principles and laid down procedures on how to release monies and money is disbursed for what and all of that after the budget is made. When it comes to monitoring this money, following it to the logical conclusion, what do you think can be done to strengthen uh, uh, the monitoring process so that monies don't just go into public, uh, sorry, into private pockets? Uh, Michael, let me let, 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 speak into the NDC. I should think and I should believe, I would suggest that henceforth all projects, all contracts awarded by these agencies should be published. We want to know the, the amount, those that have been awarded, the uh, contracts awarded to, uh, duration of, uh, of the job and the rest of them. That will also help some of us, especially those of us in the media, to follow up. We can use the FOI um, to, uh, to follow up on some of these. Uh, of, of, of this better situation where you see that contracts are just um, awarded. Um, the minister uh, said that over 60 percent of the contracts were awarded to the uh, National Assembly. Yesterday, he has denied it. He was captured on video um, saying that he has denied it. But if we have names at the contracts and uh, all the various contracts, then even those areas where those contracts were awarded should be able to follow up and take up the challenge of challenging those. They are supposed to um, execute this contract. By so by so do we can be able to monitor. But we don't know what is happening. They just award this contract, some disappear with the money, and never, uh, they just don't do anything. 
then um, the Ministry of Finance also um, should be able to also do a good job All right. by making forensic, forensic uh, analysis and the audit of some of these okay. funds. All right, we wait to see what the, the outcome of that uh, forensic audit will also be because uh, Nigerians would like to know the details of it. All right, thank you very much, uh, Chris Kendengwandu, for your time on the program. We really appreciate you.